Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me tonight. Today we're going to talk about why Black Lives Matter. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a history lesson that will let you understand, hopefully, why Black Lives Matter. So in 1619, the first ship of 20 slaves arrived in Jamestown, Virginia. Now at that point, uh, slaves were brought in to replace indentured serv servants who were just poor Europeans. That's how slavery started in the United States in 1619. However, since they found out that free labor is great, in 1705, a law was passed and it was called the Slave Codes. And the Slave Codes lasted from 1705 until 1865. Now these codes, the Slave Codes, made sure that slaves couldn't go from place to place or gather in crowds or groups without permission from their slave masters. Because to do so, you could be lynched, beaten severely, or had some form of punishment. Like your family gets sold, your children get sold, your wife gets raped or whatnot. So that's why the slave codes were uh, brought about to make sure that slaves could not organize and plan escapes for freedom like any other human being would want to be free. So in 1865, once the emancipation was signed and slaves were finally free, the black codes came about. The Black Codes lasted from 1865 to 1877, and the Black Codes were pretty much the exact same as the Slave Codes, except you didn't have to report to a master, and you weren't stuck on a plantation. Unless you happened to break one of the new laws that were brought, that were brought up by the Black Codes, which meant you couldn't be a vagrant, which you couldn't just be milling about. You couldn't own a home then, if you were African American, excuse me, Black and you couldn't go places and if you were in those places you could be incarcerated locked in prison and instead of sending you to prison they would send you back to the slave masters former slave masters and put you on a plantation where you did the same work that you were just freed for from previously so that was the black code but in 1877 it got even better in 1877 jim crow started so from 1877 until 1864 june 19th surprisingly, uh, the Jim Crow laws were in effect, which were exactly the same as the Black Codes, except it was the 20th century now. So nothing really changed. We could do certain things. We could be certain places. We had somewhat more autonomy, but the same things happened. Blacks were still lynched. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, look up the peach, the devil's peach bowl. Look that up and let me know how you feel about how much freedom we had in the uh, early uh, 20th century prior to 18, uh, 1964. So Jim Crow was a horrible thing for African Americans where many of us were murdered, lynched. It was awful. After uh, 1964, we were supposedly free, there were civil rights, but we were still getting murdered by cops and others at a higher rate than anyone else. Still to this day, we are the, we are the highest population of people that are incarcerated the fastest and we get the most time of anyone else. We don't receive the leniency that anyone else would. And we are falsely incarcerated more than any other demographic on the planet. Not just in the United States, everywhere. If you're African American, you will get more time for the same crime or more time for a lesser offense than someone who is white. It's like, we don't even know how many black people were killed by law enforcement since the inception of law enforcement until this very day. We just started keeping track of how many people cops were killing in 2013. So almost 400 years of no one keeping track of who cops were killing, especially African Americans. Now think about this. Not that just black lives matter. That yes, everyone's life matters because we're human beings. But in the past five years, the police have killed 5,400 American citizens. That's 1,000 people per year. The cops have killed 1,000 people per year. Now, 
people like to talk about Chicago, Detroit, and whatnot, when they have high murder rates, 300 people have died, 200 people have died, 100 people have died. The cops have killed 1,000 people per year for the past five years. Could you imagine if there was a any gang in the United States that every year murdered a thousand people, they would be labeled as terrorists, they would be sent to Guantanamo Bay, and they would never see the light of day ever again. But yet and still, our police, the people that we pay our taxes to, to protect us and serve us as public servants, murder us at a higher rate than anyone else, incarcerate us at a higher rate than anyone else for lesser or the same crimes. And they also murder 5,400 of our fellow citizens in five years. And no one does anything about it. There's no incarcerations for the police, hardly ever. About 1% or less of police are ever incarcerated for the crimes they commit. So we cannot sleep on this. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter because we are always and have always been under attack by a society that we built. So we don't have the same privileges as everyone else that we've more than earned. Black Lives Matter. It's true that all lives matter, but right now in this time, this day, Black Lives Matter because black lives are under attack always for the past 401 years by white society. We're trying to let you understand us to say, hey, enough is enough. You can only kill us so much. You can only beat us so much. You can only incarcerate us so much for things that are, that are the same or less than someone else that looks like you. So please stop. That's all we're asking is please stop. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me this evening. I really appreciate you guys. Have a nice weekend. Please be safe. Don't forget your social distancing. Don't get sick. We'd appreciate it if you didn't get sick. And by all means, please be the best heathens that you can be.